coming up much. I just shove everything in here in this corner where people can't see it, but basically all the shit is in here. My just rag. It's not a just rag, by the way. This, this is a cloth. Shit. It's not a just rag. This is an IKEA cloth. I clean uh, desks with it. Okay, I know this is before the FAQ has begun, but I want to give you a little bit of a tip. This is what I clean my desk with. These are glass wipes that you use for glass or windows or stuff like that, which is really good for desks as this. But a bonus tip for you, if you have a satin guitar, you can clean your guitar with this. Don't use regular guitar polish on your satin guitar. Use glass cleansing wipes, okay? And this is still not a gist rag. Perverts. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Ola Testing Shit. What's up, everyone, and welcome to FEQ number... Uh, what's up, everyone, and welcome to FEQ 115. Thank you so much for being here with me and uh, having the patience to watch through my bullshit. Not every day is as perfect as the next one, and uh, today I felt like that beginning could have gone a little bit better. I don't have any flow today. I don't know what's up. Shit. Well, let's just start with this. Maybe you saw that I released a fair bit of guitars this past week. And you know what? I feel like Santa Claus because, you know, these past two or three weeks we released a shit ton of guitars. You know, uh, solar guitars. Oh, that's my guitar brand, by the way. SolarGuitars.com. You can buy guitars. Now, the reason is that uh, we're starting to ship, I think, in a week or so. And uh, we just have a lot of new guitars and we kind of, you know, forgot to launch them. So we're launching them right now. Hola. Pro Salesman. And in the last week, we released uh, three new Floyd Rose models. So, I mean, how cool is that? Floyd Rose user, they have a really loud voice, just saying. So, we made some Floyd Rose guitars. And also, I like to play Floyd Rose, you know, every now and then. And... You know, this guitar doesn't need a light. I mean, it's dark in here, but this is basically brighter than my future. Let's just start with the first question. Aditya P. Hey Ola, I've watched your videos since your absolute early ones when you were playing the MTM. It gives me immense joy, so joy to see where you're at. Absolutely inspirational. Both you and Rob Chapman. <coughs> Cheers and may you keep being successful in all your endeavors. What do you think of all the new guitar brands? Example, tense guitars coming from China. Do you think the everyday could guitar consumers' perception about made in China guitars had gotten any better? First and foremost of all, thank you so much for those incredibly kind words. Thank you. Uh, regarding made in China, I think made in China in general is going to take a long, long time for people to get the, uh, the negative aspect of made in China out of their heads. But with that said, for the past decade, or like two decades actually, China has been you know, developing more and more and the middle class is growing and they're putting out better and better products out there. I mean, a made in China guitar today is not the same as made in China in during the 90s, for instance. But I think the difference now is that now there's also good factories that can produce really good guitars. I think it's going to be a slow process of making the made in China, you know, a quote, more processable and more accepted by people. But I mean, nowadays everything is made in China, man. I mean, this is made in China, this is made in China, uh, this uh, Studio Ghibli Japanese... Oh, made in Japan. Thank God. You cannot escape the made in China, which is... Uh, yeah, that's kind of scary, actually. Yeah, so in conclusion, I think that nowadays there's both good and bad made in China guitars being made. And, uh, you know, as that economy grows, I think we'll definitely see more and more made in China guitars. Latest bulletin from OlaEnglandFakeNews.com is that Ola is making uh, guitars in China now because of answering that question. No. Not right now, at least. Cartner10. Hey Ola, greetings from the US. Could you go in depth about your musical career on the next FAQ? I love your videos. Keep up the awesome work, man. Shit, okay. Uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> my musical career? I think that my musical career started when I started working full-time with YouTube because before that I had a job so it wasn't really my career but I had bands I played live and we you know released albums they weren't really successful but then I started YouTube and you know my YouTube was the first kind of leap of faith into 
doing this full time and making music full time. And I was kind of lucky at that time as well because then just one or two months after I, uh, you know, quit my desk job and started YouTube, Chris Barnes called me up, asked me to join Six Feet Under. I played in there for a year and then I got a call from the guys in The Haunted. They wanted me to play in their band. So I got out to play live pretty quick. And that was not what I was planning, but uh, it's definitely something I'm really happy about today and uh, being in these two bands. And uh, obviously I'm not in Six Feet Under anymore, but I'm still in The Haunted. That's just the way it all kind of grew. And I see now, you know, the more effort I push into YouTube, the steadier the growth of my channel. And with my YouTube channel, everything else grows as well. You know, my band Feared, uh, obviously I'm, you know, solar guitars. I wouldn't be able to form Solar Guitars if it wasn't for my YouTube channel. And uh, I've kind of created this whole Old England Enterprises business surrounding what I've done on YouTube. So basically that's the short answer to your question. And it might sound like there's no effort behind it, but it's a lot of work, <laughs> I must say. It's been a lot of work, but uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that question. I hope I answered it. Tripcore, whoa, Tripcore. That's a good side of me getting older, by the way, trying to be cool like that. Brola, if I want to blend two different amp sims when recording, how can I ensure the levels on each sim are identical besides just trying to listen to them? That's a really good question. I mean, that goes in general when you're trying to balance two different guitar tones, if you have different amplifiers, for instance. First and foremost, you need to work your ears or like listen and not only look at the level meter. I mean, you have the level meter showing in stereo. So, I mean, once I can see that it's higher, or louder than the other, but when you're listening to them, it's about the same. But that higher one might have frequencies that are, you know, pushing above that uh, cannot really be heard or uh, it's, it's hard to compare. But there are uh, different tools for this. Just listening is probably the best solution to this. But there's also, I'm gonna check it out in Logic, but Logic has this metering plugin that's uh, built into Logic, by the way. So if you have Logic, that's really good. The LUFs. I think it's called LUFS. And LUFS is, you know, loudness units relative to full scale. There is a plugin like this available in Logic, loudness meter. So you can check it here in the loudness meter and uh, you can get some kind of perception which one is louder or not. This is a really good tool. I use it sometimes when I'm um, preparing for clinics, for instance, to check the levels in between different songs. So, you know, a song from one album can be very loud or loud in a different way than another song from another album. So I use this meter to kind of, you know, even out the differences in between the two and I can EQ after this. So um, yeah, that's a loudness meter for you. Great, shit, I'm actually being helpful today, I think. Warlock Eviscerator, Ola the Shedding Suite. I know that you've done the live stream of your album, My New Influence, and a couple of playthroughs so on on those songs in other videos and tabs. Would you please put tabs to Solar Part 1? It's my absolute favorite song and would love to learn to play it. Thank you for the inspiration. There are tabs for Solar Part 1. It's just that they're included in the guitarist or ultimate edition of the album if you order from the website and you get the tab book and all that. So there you go. You can get it. It's, uh, it's out there. DJ Dirty Dill. Uh, how, hola, hola. I know you said your favorite Meshuggah album was Cat 33. What's your favorite moment on that album? Cheers. <laughs> Fakenews.com. I never said that. Don't put words in my mouth. I never said that. My favorite Meshuggah album has always been Chaosphere. Here we go. A prime example of people remembering wrong and putting words into my mouth. The question should have been, Ola, I think I heard you say that Catch 33 was your favorite Meshuggah album. I'm gonna tell you my favorite moments of Chaosphere. New Millennium, Cyanide Christ. Can I play it? Probably not, but let's try it anyway. Something like that. But there you go. DJ Dirty Dill, thank you for the question. You're a liar. Right there. But thank you so much for being a member. Because I brought this question out from the member section of the Discord channel. Thank you, Dirty DJ. Thank you, DJ Dirty Dill. Really hard to say. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. Okay, song. Song time. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. I want DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. DJ Dirty Dill. I want the DJ Dirty Dill. Shit. Aaron Pitzenbarger, most important guitar student instruction video, books you have ever had, gonna see Slayer Tuesday in Columbus. Awesome, Slayer. Did you see Philip Anselmo? 
Band. Steven in there is playing a Solar. There you go. Plugging myself again, Old England. You know, I haven't watched too many instructional videos, but the one that I really clinged on to was Rock Discipline by John Petrucci. And that's the one that I practiced the most with, I guess. He also makes these really cool exercises for sweeping. And I mean, it's a really good DVD because it covers a lot of things, technically. I, I watched that video a lot and uh, it's uh, it helped me a lot, I must say. So there you go. Day. <laughs> uh, I played this riff, it's from that YouTube song. I played this riff in, uh, in the beginning of an FAQ not too long ago and people were like, oh, that's an amazing riff, may I steal it? No, you may not steal it, but I'm gonna teach you how to play it. It's the uh, middle section of that YouTube song that goes like this. Okay, and it goes like this slow. This guitar is in standard E with a drop uh, D, but in the song it's a guitar tuned to drop C, okay? But this is how you play it, the riff. Band. So there you go, riff of the day. Frolix said, Hey Ola, great fit as usual. I just wanted to ask whether you encourage a young player to start a YouTube channel considering that this may take up valuable hours that could be spent teaching or doing sessions. I feel like there are so many awesome channels nowadays and I don't know how much room there's left for anything new. Thank you for the question. Now, what is the reason for you starting a YouTube channel? I mean, if the reason is for you that you want to be successful and get recognized very quick, I think that it's gonna backfire. Then you're just gonna give up because you're gonna make videos and you're just gonna be, you know, infuriated that you're not getting any views and then you eventually you're gonna give up. I think that if you start a YouTube channel because you think it's fun, that it's a hobby, then you just f do it already. It's a lot of fun to make videos and eventually you get people to watch your videos. That's even more fun. And, uh, at, you know, if you continue on doing it as a hobby, like, that's how I started. You know, I made it because I thought it was a lot of fun. I mean, I spent... You know, someone's calling. Oh, I'm not gonna answer. When I started my channel, I started as a hobby. And, you know, I spent, you know, a lot of my time uh, after work doing my videos and all that. And I just did it because I thought it was a lot of fun. And people reacted and, you know, they watched my videos. And it really encouraged me to make more. And I think that is needed for you to, you know, just keep on doing it to get to the next level. If you go into it saying like, okay, you know, I don't know what to offer in this saturated world. Okay, if you just go in and do your thing and don't care about the other ones, just do what you think is awesome, what you think is fun, and I think you'll be all right, okay? That's what I do. I don't pay too much attention to other guys. I just do my thing, okay? Jay Stormer likes the video at the beginning because of notifications. Oh, thank you so much. Removes like after the member plug. Okay, you know what? I have to say something here. Serious Ola, you know, in my videos, you know, obviously I'm plugging my guitar brand. This is my guitar brand, sologuitars.com. You can buy guitars uh, designed by me. I get money, you, uh, you get guitar. This is what I do for a living. And you know, the member part of things is for people that, you know, want to support me more than they are doing today. People can watch my videos, you know, I get a little bit of ad revenue and all that, but if they want to, they can support me more by becoming a member. Is it really that much of a problem if I plug myself in my videos so I can continue to be able to make these? Or do you rather want to see me make a sponsored advertisement for Raid, the mobile game that's so awesome? It's so awesome that every other YouTuber is making sponsored ads of Raid, the mobile game. 
or uh, about the ball shaving brand that shaves your balls automatically I'm plugging myself, you know, just to keep my channel alive so I can buy gear and make tests and all that my members are helping me making this whole YouTube thing sustainable for me and, uh, you know, if you enjoy my videos I mean, why is it a problem if I'm plugging myself? just saying, a little bit of Honest Ola right there sometimes Honest Ola has to appear and it just happened Jay Stormer, thank you so much for that, uh, whatever it was Shadow of Callisto, had to resub last week myself <gasps> Luckily, I watch your awesome videos regularly, so they're always on top of my feed So I eventually realized I wasn't a subscriber oh. <laughs> Can you show people how indeed you can bend on an Evertune? Lots of people say you can't, when I know that's simply not true Alright, misconception about Evertune bridges <laughs> Okay, let's take this one Because this is a new guitar, solarguitars.com needs to sell guitars It's Christmas soon, buy a guitar for your loved ones Or your dad, that you hate Okay, I'm putting up my leg on the armrest here, so I look like a douchebag Okay, so you said you can't bend on an Evertune? Well, take a look at this Oh, it's set up not to bend <laughs> Okay, so what you do is that, you know, when you tune an Evertune guitar You set it up in a zone where nothing happens when you bend But that's where you tune the guitar But then when you're done with that, you set up the tuner up here To just before the string goes sharp, and then you back down And then you can bend all day So I think this is more about people not being educated more than anything else So there you go, thank you so much Shadow of Calista. Everything music and guitar shenanigans I was going to buy a Solar, instead I'm going to buy Kerry King's new Dean model Reason being is that I absolutely love earwigs God damn it Why do I keep repping other guitar brands on my FAQs? I should rep my own brand, Solar Guitars a lot more SolarGuitars.com, buy a guitar uh, for yourself and your cat I'm Ole England, I'm a fan of guitar related gear I love guitars and, you know, I should be able to rep any guitar that I like You know, I have a Strat here, I have... Uh, oh, it's a bad example, I only had solo guitars in this rack I had this Master Sword though You know, even though I'm selling these guitars and, you know, they're really good bang for the buck And they play really awesome and amazing They're awesome, ex excellent guitars that you can buy from sologuitars.com You know, it's a guitar There are other brands out there that are really good as well That's okay that's perfectly fine, I mean, I'm just happy to be in this industry and being this small little guy To be able to kind of shake the business around a little bit But you know, every now and then I love playing my f Strat here Because it's a different playing beast and it's just a really good guitar So dude, getting your earwig guitar, I'm totally happy for you Good luck buddy, thank you Gen Man Oh no, Gen Man No, it's definitely not a man, it's a woman Gen 26 Hey Ola, I'm sure you answered this question but I can't find which video it was in Why Evertune and not Floyd on your solo guitars? Is it because Evertune is easier to set up? I like Floyd, but they can be a pain to set up I haven't had a chance to mess with an Evertune, so I'm curious about it Okay, so she's probably talking about solo guitars But yeah, uh, the reason why there's a lot of Evertune equipped solo guitars is because Evertune is something I truly believe in and it's an innovation that I stand by I would say 80% of the time when I'm playing guitar, I'm playing an Evertune equipped guitar It's just, it's just so good, man uh, Oh, uh, sorry, it's just so good, woman Occasionally I like to play Floyd as well And as you see in this video, we're releasing three new Floyd models this past week So, you know, I try to make as broad of a uh, lineup as possible But still trying to be smart about it Because we're still a small brand and we have to be careful about it We cannot just offer everything at once and uh, it's just me being a cautious Swede, basically And I think it's good to be cautious because if you're cautious Maybe it'll be more of a sustainable solution Rather than just, you know, go all in at once You know, I want to be able to build a brand uh, with a steady foundation Something that maybe my kids can uh, benefit from when uh, I die Just saying Hungry Guitar Student Lately, a lot of YouTubers, KMAC, etc. have done parody videos on guitarists who quantize, speed up and MIDI the hell out of their tracks What's your opinion about that? Thanks for the great content Okay, so these past two weeks I think there was one video that mentioned this or made an example of uh, people that are speeding up their guitar solos or faking videos with Guitar Pro and basically reamping a Guitar Pro MIDI track I see a lot of these on Instagram and YouTube and it's so obvious that it's sped up or that they're using Guitar Pro or whatever It's like the playing is just too clean and it's uh, almost clinical and it's like yeah, how are people not hearing this? and I'm like, okay, but you know what? I don't really care if he chooses to do it like this whatever if you're recording like this or you record an album you know, 
whatever, you do what you need to do. I mean, people auto-tune, this is probably the equivalent of auto-tuning, but for guitar playing. And, uh, you know, people do what they want to do on their productions and whatnot. But I think the problem is when you perform this music on YouTube and you're faking it, it's basically lying. Unless they uh, disclose that they're faking it in the beginning. Otherwise, they're basically just trying to, to fool people. I think it's not fair to the viewer to uh, fake a video. At some point, someone's going to address it, which happened now. So I guess these guitarists are getting outed. I think that it's probably for convenience reasons that they are just, you know, they just cannot play it properly or like clean. So they just rely on a guitar profile and then they just, you know, mime over it basically. That's something I also did when I, you know, started my YouTube channel and, you know, when you got to at the point where you had to pump out videos, you know, that's it, it was really convenient to to pre-record a part, not fake it, just pre-record it and then mime over that part. Back then I was so, uh, you know, obsessed with perfection of a video, but I pretty quickly let go of that because at the end of the day, it just made, you know, the pre-recording and all that, it just took a lot longer of time. Uh, so I just dump that and you know let, right now i mean if you see my videos everything's basically hanging out i mean there's there's errors everywhere and you know it's just that i don't really care does it make me look like a shit guitar player probably do i care about it no not really i just think that's the most honest way of doing things and i mean i want to portray myself and everything you see as being performed live in the video is this what these guys are doing wrong is it I don't know. You know what? Oh, shit. I've been waiting for this moment because I know there's a poll option. So you can go into a poll and vote for yourself. I'm going to put a poll up here. Is it fair to trick record for a video? You know, personally, I don't like the idea of, of people doing this, but I'm going to play devil's advocate and say that, you know, for for the art, you know, the music, does it really matter if they fake record it or not? Just saying. Dogarn the Marauder. Hi Ola, I can't stop listening to your Master of the Universe album. I have sleeping problems, so when I sleep, I would listen to your album and it makes me sleep. I don't know why. Is this a compliment? Or does my album actually make you sleep? <laughs> uh, about a new soul album? I don't know, man. It all depends on how much music I get to write in the coming months. We'll see. The problem now is that there needs to be a new The Haunted album, there needs to be a new Feared album, uh, and there's there also needs to be a new Soul album. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see what the what, what, uh, future brings. Cornivore. Beast Rich will go out of business losing its only real artist. Okay, he's talking about the latest FAQ where uh, uh, Carol King left BC Rich. And now BC Rich is kind of like up and coming, but they don't really have any artists. I don't think that BC Rich will go out of business. You know, I think it's a brand that has a name that's very important to the industry. And uh, I think they will stick around for a good while. And uh, I don't think it will be a problem for them not having any artists. They're, they're probably going to get artists. So you don't have to worry about that. I really hope that their new line and uh, their new you know, a wave of guitars is going well, because I think the industry needs it. So yeah, I don't see them going out of business anytime soon. Riku Maike Katekatekatekainen. Uh, I just have to ask, why do you always seem to avoid discussing about Children of Bodom and Alex Laiho? I get that it might not be your music, but the band has made huge impact on Mel in general. The question is, have you read about them disbanding? Also, what do you honestly think about Alexi Laiho and his playing? Great question. So why am I always avoiding discussing Children of Bodom? You know what? I, I'm not avoiding it. I, I made an FAQ talking about it. Basically what I said is that, you know, I haven't listened to the band. I have no idea what they sound like. I, well, I have some sort of perception. They're Mel and, you know, Alex Elio. I have no idea how he plays. I, I, I don't know. It's like you asking me, why are you avoiding talking about the Bee Gees? What? Huh? Do you hate them? I love the Bee Gees, by the way. So yeah, me not talking about it is basically because I have nothing to say about them. What? What? They made a huge impact on Mel. That's awesome. That's great. I'm happy for you. But, you know, I don't have any personal connection with this band or anything like that. I never listened to them. Uh, have you read about them disbanding? Uh, I think I saw a link somewhere, but I didn't read about it, so I don't really know about that. 
I have, I have nothing to say about Alexi Laiho's playing. I'm sorry, it's just that I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Hayden Naughton. As a YouTuber, what's the stat you stress over the most? Subscriptions, like, dislikes on videos, whammy subscriber percentage or do you just ignore it all? It depends on when you would have asked me this question. Back in the day, uh, when I started my YouTube channel, obviously views and likes was very important for me. Nowadays, I don't focus that much on views or view count or dislike or like count or whatever because it doesn't bring me anything basically. Fine, views, yes, you know, I see a video get a lot of views. That makes me happy, you know. Maybe that's a good uh, testament of me making a video that people enjoy and uh, that makes me happy. Dislikes or likes, it's like, you know, I see guys disliking my videos like, wow, my life is ruined now. <laughs> it's like, what? no. Basically, it doesn't mean shit. In YouTube here, I'm just, I'm just trying to do my thing and, you know, walk my own path or whatever. I, I, I don't pay that much attention to if uh, other guys are successful or not. I, I try to keep myself focused on what I think is fun and uh, just try and go my own way. And uh, I think that makes me happier. And I also think that if I'm happier, it will shine through a lot more in my videos and the videos become better. That's uh, kind of like my perspective on this whole thing. So uh, there you go. Thank you so much, Hayden Naughton. And that was the last question. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section of this video. Please try and make them as short as possible. It will just be a better flow in the video. And uh, even though I said I had terrible flow in the beginning, I think that I got the flow going. Put a like down there if you liked it. Subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you. Bye.